some of you already have uh, internship experience or something, and you will know that. You don't really need to use this, you use a chart, right? You will use a chart. Okay, you don't need to select cylinder and make sure the uh, separator combinators sell you whatever that is suitable. The cylinder ratio that you have seen it will be between 3 and 4 already. Why do we do all this? Let's see later on the difference between the chart and the actual calculation. Okay, okay that's a horizontal one. For vertical one, I have another equation. Okay, That's the equation for vertical one. The definition of the unit is the same as in the horizontal case. Okay? It's in field unit. The derivation of this is gas velocity uh, equal to Q over area. But this time, area, we have vertical separator, right? For vertical separator, the cross section area of the flow will be pi d squared over 4. That's 80. So uh, do some uh, unit conversion, I get that. And then the relationship between actual flow rate and the volume uh, st uh, standard flow rate. I get the same equation, that equation, and that could be on the quiz. Could be. On the quiz, maybe this one is on another side or something, but this is very likely. I, I think I can, I can have this or maybe we don't number thing, but this one is easier. Okay? So this is very likely. That you have it on the quiz. Mm. Okay, then I get V T equal to sixty. Okay. His name again. Afshin. Why right this time I have sixty? Is this have you seen this before? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. That is for flow in the pipe. And it's the same equation for flow in a separator, vertical separator, because the cross section area is circle shape, and we occupy the whole whole space. Okay, that is the actual velocity of the flow in the separator and in the pipe. It's the same because we occupy the whole space. Then we know the terminal velocity. Terminal velocity. That's the equation derived earlier. Okay, we make velocity of gas flowing up to be equal to the terminal velocity okay so that is kind of a limit if i didn't have the droplet it will fall down uh maybe one feet per second and i flow something up equal to one feet per second it may that's a boundary. If I flow it faster, maybe it go up, right? So that is the the boundary. That is one easy way to do this approximation, and they use it in the separator sizing. Okay, by making v g equal to terminal velocity, rearrange something, we get d square equal to that. Okay, that's equation for vertical separator. For liquid part, instead of 0.7, I get 0.12. The derivation is the same thing, but this time the volume is not the same. Last time I used half pi d square over 4 multiplied by length. Right? But this time I have pi d square over 4 multiplied by height. So I have liquid height. So it, I assume that the whole liquid volume is the space, is the volume where liquid particles spend time in. Okay? So volume is that much. Rearrange it, I get that. So this equation is the relationship between retention time and the separator dimension. If we have same separator, but I operate by having more liquid height. This means I have more retention time. Okay? So when we buy the same separator, you operate by that much liquid. I operate more liquid volume. This means it's not the same retention time for liquid. Okay? So the retention time for liquid part is depend on how much we how do we operate it. Two. It's not just 
what do we buy is also what do we do, all right? So that is retention time for our liquid part. The first part is uh, gas capacity equation for vertical separator. The second one is liquid set capacity for the vertical separator. And okay, this is a derivation. Basically, it's the same. Uh, but you have seen before. And this one, you will do this on this coming Thursday. Maybe. Oh, I, I, I think I will have to do that. Okay. What do we do? Seam to seam length. We have two equations. If the diameter is less than or equal to 36, we use the top equation. If it's below, uh, less, if it's more than 36, we use another equation. That's seam to seam. And we select whatever cylinder is ratio that is between 3 to 4. Okay. The calculation step is the same as what we did previously for the horizontal separator. Okay. Step one for vertical part. Okay, let's erase that. We specify the retention time that we like. Let's say five minutes. We happen to have the carbon dioxide. Okay. And then we specify the size that we think is available, 24, 30, 36. Okay, we specify the size. Then we get L effective from not this equation, but the equation equivalent to this, which is going to be this one. Oh, this one, I, I just put height in and I get everything, okay? And another one is depend on the first one, just diameter. The second one is just height. Uh, maybe we do it a little bit different. After we do that, we get LS. After we get LS, then we calculate the cylinder next ratio and select the right one. <coughs> Let's see the example later. Okay, maybe we go to the example. Example. Uh, so if we don't do the actual experiment to test the separator, how do we get the capacity of the separator? This example from Arnold Schott, we have gas flow rate that high, liquid flow rate at that API gravity, operating pressure that much, okay? temperature, we know everything, we know the micron, the droplet size that we want to separate, and we know uh, viscosity of gas from some kind of handbook. Retention time, we think for liquid phase is about three minutes. Okay, the question is, size the vertical separator based on the given information with the specific gravity. What do we do? Step one, calculate C D. Okay. C sub D, it is rho V D over mu, right? So we need to know density. To know density, okay, for liquid part, I do some kind of unit conversion from API gravity to, so this is the formula to convert from API gravity to uh, what? Specific gravity, and then specific gravity, gamma, multiplied by C2.4, we get power per cubic foot. Okay, gas density, it is this equation, 2.7 something. 2.7 multiplied by gamma P over Tz. Should you know how to derive this? Yes, you should know, but okay, that's maybe for later quiz, okay? That's for later quiz. Where's 2.7 come from? I, I don't want to ask you this coming th Thursday. But, okay, okay let, me, let me tell you this. For this coming th Thursday, 10% chance for this, and 90% chance for that Q equation, okay? All right? So it's a, it, I may not ask it. It just have 10% chance. Another 90% it will be that equation. Z, compressibility factor, 0.84, Rho G, I calculate it, I get that much, okay? And the unit has to be, what? Mm, I don't know, let, let me check my derivation on, on the unit. Okay. <coughs> After I do that, then I try to calculate uh, C sub D. For the case of turbulent flow, C sub D require some kind of iteration, so I come up with initial case, point 34, okay? I put point 34 in over there, and drop the diameter, 
I put it in over there. Gas density over there. I'll same it as power per cubic foot. Okay. Liquid density. I put everything in. I get terminal velocity. That's terminal velocity that I get. After I get terminal velocity, I'll skip this for for right now. After I get terminal velocity, terminal velocity is 0.866, right? That's Vt. I put 0.866 uh, over here, 0.866 back, then I can calculate the new Reynolds number. I put the Reynolds number into C sub D equation, I get the new value of that coefficient. I keep repeat my iteration process. I get that coefficient equal to this value, this value, this value, I, oh, no, 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 that's VT. That coefficient keeps changing until it stops changing, equal to 0.81. Good. Okay, how, how do we get this equation? How do I know that it is 6.7 something, something, something? Have you seen this derivation before? Yes, it's, it's not in the lecture. It's not in previous lecture? Yes or no? You don't know. It's, I think it's in the homework, right? In the homework, you will have to find how to get that eh? in one of the lecture. Okay, once we get C sub D, then we put that C sub D in, we get 0.851, right? We put it in, we can get the diameter, 21.9 based on the gas capacity equation. Good? Okay. Not the next quiz, 10% chance for the next quiz. This is how I get 2.7. 2.7. But you remember that OH. OH, monoethylene glycol. That's 100% chance, right, for the next quiz. That structure. Okay. And for each corner, that corner is C two H two, and that's C two H two, and you plus another two, another two, and you have two O, and you know the formula, you know the structure. Go back and memorize it. This is the inhibitor for hydrate, right? One hundred percent chance. And very unlikely that I will forget. Okay, I get the diameter based on gas capacity equation. I can also get the diameter. Based on, <coughs> oh, okay, now I have liquid capacity equation. Compute combination of D and H for various T sub R. Okay. So this means I list, okay, my uh, retention time may be three minutes, or maybe two minutes, or maybe one minute, okay? And then I list the possible diameter size. Possible diameter size. Based on each size, I calculate edge. Okay, this is length for liquid capacity constraint. I use this equation from given T sub R and liquid flow rate. And I have several cases for diameter, then I can calculate several height. Okay. Compute this combined thing. Compute the simple steam length. D equal to minimum diameter for gas capacity. <coughs> simple steam length equation. Let's go back. We have two equations, right? One for above 36 and one for below 36. That's simple steam length equation. Could these two. So, <coughs> sometimes, you need height or without diameter. Sometimes we also need diameter depending on the size, right? So that is the equation for seam to seam length. Mm. For this example, based on gas, we get the diameter of 21.9 inch. That is just based on gas. But when I use liquid, I have 
I list several cases, and the case that I list out, the diameter is more than 21.9. You see this? <laughs> I calculate first, I get 21.9, right? But when I select the case to do the height calculation, the combination of height and diameter, I select those that is larger than 21.9, okay? So by using gas equation, I just get one constraint. But I need to know what about constraint from liquid part, okay? So that is the minimum diameter. So we select something for further calculation and that has to be more than 21.9. Compute the slenderness ratio. So I know three minutes, I know 24 inch, then I go back to my equation D square edge equal to TR QL over 0.12. I can calculate edge easily, right? The height. So I get that height. After I get the height of each cases, I can calculate uh, seam to seam length. 36 something. Uh, edge plus. Edge plus. 76 divided by 12 for something that is less than 36 inch. After I calculate slenderness ratio, I can calculate, oh, after seam to seam length, I calculate slenderness ratio, which is 12 L over D. And I pick the one that is between three and four. Three and four, okay, three and four. Those are the one that is in between three and four. Good. We don't have many of them that is between 3 and 4. And for this case, we select 36 inch, 10 feet. 36 inch, 10 feet. Uh, so we have 36 inch, 36 inch, and oh. that is to satisfy our condition and also the availability. So this chart is this show me, I can have 36 inch, 10 feet. Huh? I can have, what else? 36 inch, 15 feet. I cannot have 36 inch, 11 feet. I don't have 11 feet. I have the length maybe 5, or 7 and a half, 10, 15, 20. That's it. Okay? So I select the one that's available. Choose a reasonable size with diameter greater than that determined by gas capacity. This side of the separator provides slightly more than 3 minutes retention time with diameter greater than 21.8.9 and slenderness ratio of 3.2. So it's good. So it has good retention time and good slenderness ratio. So we select that. Okay. And if we require less retention time, we may go with a smaller one or something. Okay. Look at look at this. SS seam to seam length. I get 9.6. But I don't have the size of 9.6 to buy. That's why I buy the size that is 10 feet. Okay, the height of 10 feet, I buy that one. Okay. What if you want to use this one? Oh, you know that, that you should not have, right? So basically, this, this kind of calculation not just tell the size, it also tell how much liquid should I put in to get three minute retention time, and what should be the height or seam to seam length, okay? The actual seam to seam length has to be a little larger than that, if it is not commercially available, okay? Question. Question, question, question. Uh, next to Ryan, what's your name? Alex. Alex, can you do this in the test? <laughs> this is not in the last year test, not in the last year exam. If you have something similar to this, can you do it? Right now, yeah. no, 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 no. On March 8th, 5 p.m., can you do this? Maybe. Ma maybe? Just maybe, okay, maybe I should not put this in it, <laughs> maybe. Okay, next is about using the chart. Okay, 
the one that you just learned is from this book, Anna Stewart. Okay, surface production operation. There's that's a ten percent of the time, and it tells you it's not just the size that we buy; it's about what do we do with it, how do we operate, what is the liquid high that we put in. Okay, that is ten percent of the time. Let's take a look at the ninety percent of the time. That is easy. We have for flow rate, volumetric flow rate of liquid part equal to 1440 multiplied by volume in barrel divided by time in minute. This is the relationship between retention time and liquid capacity, the flow rate. Very easy, right? And here's the derivation. So <clears throat> derivation of 144. Time equal to volume divided by flow rate, or flow rate equal to volume divided by time, do something, and I get that. 144. Good? Review by yourself. All this is for liquid part. That's it. How easy it is. Very easy, right? So the relationship between written time and volume of flow rate. That is for quick check. Okay, some note. Uh, the chart that you will see is specific to that manufacturer. It can be more accurate because they do the test on that. Okay, but not all separator then, not all a separator will be on the chart. So it can be more accurate. The actual separator has more internal component than the calculation. Calculation doesn't account for any internal part, as you see, right? So, and you already know why do we learn about it, so that you can do that ten percent of the time. <coughs> the chart will be provide, okay? Table will be provide. You don't have to print it, and you cannot bring that in the exam anyway. It, uh, I will announce that later, but very likely it will be closed book like last year, not open book and closed book. Okay, here's the chart. Gas capacity. And uh, this card. Mm, you see this number? 48 inches, that's diameter, by 10 feet. Okay, that is for that size of separator. And another one is 36 by 10 feet. 36 by 7.5 feet. 30 feet by 10, 30, 30 inches by 10 feet. 3 feet by 5 feet. So that is the size of separator. What do I do? Okay. Let's say I have the gas flow rate of uh, 6 million standard cubic foot per day. That's the gas flow rate. And this one is vertical separator. And this is to calculate how much gas that I can handle. If I have 6 million star cubic foot per day, I operate at 60 uh, PSIG. So if I use, oh, I can use 3 feet diameter by 10 feet. That's it. So this is a line. So that is the line for 3 feet by 10 feet. Good. So if I ask you, hey, if I have gas flow rate of 10 million slack cubic feet, I, how, how big should be the separator that I use? So the first question is, what pressure do I operate? If I operate at 100 PSIG, I have, oh, let, let's clean everything first. Let's say I have 10 million standard cubic foot per day. I operate it at 100 PSIG. What is the size of separator that I should use? Uh, who want to do it? Who want to do it? Mitchell, what size should I use? 36. 36? 48 by 10 feet or 48 by 15? 48 by 10. So that's a 48 by 10, right? That's the line. So if I draw this, 
I stop there. So that is for 10 feet. So 48 by 10 feet can handle more than 10 million static cubic feet per day. But one size DAO cannot handle 10 million. So we need to select 48 inches by 10 feet. That's it. Good? Too easy to put on the exam, but yes, it has to be on the exam anyway. But it's very easy. The rest, it's just, I cannot believe that you opened the wrong chart. The chart says very, very clear. Low pressure, high vertical separator, high pressure, gas capacity of vertical separator, <coughs> just that. So this one, gas capacity of vertical separator, for high pressure, do the same thing. This is the same thing, different chart. Oh, okay. This one is a little bit different. Look at this. This is horizontal separator. It's gas capacity of horizontal separator. We do the same thing, but we have this line. One quarter full, one third full, or one half full. Okay. The actual paper will be larger than this, and it will be up close, so you can see. If I have, if I operate like half full, mm, uh, let, let's let's operate that one third full. One third full is this one. That is one third full. If I have, let's say about eight million stack to be fit per day, I have one third full. What should be the size that I use? So, what I do is. One third full, I operate it, okay, let's say I operate at this line, the central line, almost 90. So I go up, right, and hey, let's stop at this 10, 30 inches by 10 feet, that's the line. What happens if I use 30 inches by 10 feet, okay, if I use 30 inches by 10 feet, I operate it at about 90 uh, PSIG, it can handle more than 10 million static cubic feet per day. If I operate one third full, if I operate half full, it can handle 8 million static cubic feet per day. Okay, good. So one third full. We go one step up. So if we operate it just half full, we just go straight. One third full, one step up. Okay. And quarter full, two step up. Then we know how much uh, standard cubic foot body that we can have. Crazy. Question from me. Okay. If I have 10 million standard cubic foot body, I operated 100 PSIG. Okay. Next to Mattel, what was your name? Behind Mattel? What? Taylor. Taylor what? Taylor Davis. What is the size of the separator for horizontal separator <coughs> that I should use? How big? 36 by 10, 36 by 10 is that one. Do you want to operate what, half full or what? One quarter full, one third full? Or oh, it doesn't matter, or it matter. I think maybe it's difficult to look on your screen. <laughs> okay, let's do it together. If I operate at 100 PSIG, Uh, clean everything. 100 PSIG. Okay. And gas capacity that I have is 10 million static cubic foot per day. So it cross over there, right? That's what it is. If I operate just half full, I don't have to do anything. I just move to this side. So this means the line above on this separator can handle it. Okay. What if I want to use a smaller size? Is that the option? So if I use 
30 by 10. 30 by 10 is stop right there. Is that an option? Um, I go and I stop on the half half full line. And let's say I wait just, just one quarter. Okay. Yes, it is an option, but okay. if I use 30 by 10 and 100, I cannot operate half full because if half full, it cannot handle 10 minutes like a foot per day. If I do one third full, yes, it will do the job. If I do one quarter full, yes, it will do the job. That's how you do it. Got it? And this is the same thing, same thing, same thing. Okay, retention time correction. <clears throat> the size for the, for the liquid part. So this time is for liquid capacity. This chart that is given, you see one third full, one quarter full, something is for the case of one minute retention time. If you have two minute retention time, the capacity that it can handle you have to multiply by 0.5. Something like that. Okay? And that's the equation is the oh it's time is not isn't it? Oh it's 12 19 on my cell phone. Okay, not on my cell phone. Okay, one thing to mention before you go, here's a list of available separator signs and you may size it based on that equation in the homework. The chart is independent of gamma, but when you use equation, the equation is dependent on that gamma. If you look at it, the term that has to do with rho, that density of gas, is dependent on gamma, right? So that's a difference. You make some assumption for, for the case of the chart. It's, that's why it's in the middle of gamma. So if we do something with gamma, the, the calculator can be more accurate. Uh, bring calculator next time. Goodbye. Have a good day.